What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, we are gonna be doing a deep dive into the resume that got me into Google. Recently, I made a video showcasing the software engineering projects that got me into Google, and that video was extremely well received, but a lot of people were asking me, how did you showcase those projects on your resume? So, when the people demand, I provide. That sounded a little bit weird. So we're going to be taking a very close look at the exact resume that I sent to the Google recruiter about two and a half years ago when I applied to Google and when I was hired at Google as a software engineer. By the way, if you're curious about how I landed the interviews at Google, I made a video exactly on that topic, so be sure to check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. We're going to try to identify the good things about that resume, the bad things about it, and hopefully you'll be able to extract a lot of useful information from this video as you write your own resume. As a bonus, we're also going to take a look at my current resume, or rather the resume that I used a few months ago during my most recent job search, and we're going to kind of compare it to the old one, see what's better now, how I've rephrased a lot of things, and so on and so forth. So without further ado, grab your resume, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's dive into it. By the way, if you're someone who's not at all into resumes and you're just curious about this, or maybe you like watching my videos for whatever reason, that's totally fine too. Come on in. So here it is the resume that got me into Google. Now before I zoom in so that you can actually read the text and so that we go through every subsection individually, I do want to briefly talk about the general layout of this resume because as you can see, this is not your standard Microsoft Word resume or Google Docs resume. I'm using a very special template here with the sort of two column layout. It's actually a pretty popular template. You may have seen it before. It was made by this guy named Debarga Das. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He's actually a software engineer at Google now in New York City. I may have crossed paths with him when I was there. It's a very popular template. I actually altered it a little bit. I changed a bit of the spacing and some of the fonts, and I think that it looks very, very good, especially in my current resume. You'll see why a bit later in the video, but I will say that not everyone likes this resume template. I have met a few people who just didn't like the two column layout and thought that it was distracting and they just preferred a sort of standard cookie cutter resume on a Word document or on a Google Docs. So that's sort of up to you. Another couple of things to note with this resume is that it is written in LaTeX or LaTeX, however you want to pronounce it, L-A-T-E-X, which is a sort of like markup language. So if you want to actually use this template, you have to learn how to write in LaTeX, which can be a little bit of work at first and might not be worth it for you. There might also be a little bit of extra work in figuring out how to get the template, how to actually edit it. You'll probably have to use an online LaTeX editor like Overleaf. I'll put some very brief instructions in the description below, but otherwise I'll leave it to the viewer to kind of figure this out if you want to use this template. Now you'll see that at the very top I have all of my personal information, my email, my GitHub, my personal website, my LinkedIn. This is all sort of the standard stuff that you probably want to put on your resume. Then if we go down into the actual content of the resume, the first thing that you might notice is that it's very packed. There's a lot of information on this resume. It does fit in one page, but there is a lot of information. And to be honest, I would say that that's not so great. I remember I kind of struggled with this because at the time I had no real work experience, definitely no work experience in the software engineering field. I didn't actually have any internships, so I was kind of at a big disadvantage and I wanted to really sort of sell myself very well, so I tried to jam-pack as much stuff that I thought was, you know, even remotely valuable as possible. It's hard to say whether or not that was a good strategy, but I would definitely say in hindsight that there are a few things that I may have been able to cut out, which we'll look into in a second. Now on the left of this two column layout, you'll notice that I have all of my education, my skills, and the little work experience that I did have, mostly jobs during college. And then on the right, I have all of my projects with my technical projects at the very top, and then what I called my business projects and clubs, which were non-technical projects. So if we take a closer look at the education section, you'll notice that for the two important pieces of education, I tried to capture in just a few lines the most important tidbits of information. What did I study at these places of education? For the boot camp, I put the curriculum and I kind of captured it in full stack JavaScript and computer science. For UPenn, I put my major and my minor as well as some important coursework that I took because I'd taken a lot of classes in business and entrepreneurship and I thought that it would be valuable 
able to kind of try to sell that part of myself. And then I also tried to capture a few things like, of course, you know, GPA, basically like metrics or awards that you got. So for me, it was like GPA and Dean's List my final year at the university. And then for the coding boot camp, I put, you know, an award, a sort of award that we had gotten during a hackathon. This was actually for the Oak programming language project that I mentioned in the other video about the software engineering projects that got me into Google. And I also had to do the Code Wars flex because you, you just have to. As far as putting your high school on your resume, I really don't think that it adds much value at all. So if you're short on space, definitely remove your high school. The reason that I put it there is because, first of all, I do think that it paints a slightly more accurate picture of who you are. And in my case, it really accentuates the fact that I genuinely am French American. Like I speak fluent French and that is an asset that I kind of want to sell. Although I'm not really sure if it's that useful in software engineering, but that's why I put it there. As far as skills are concerned, you'll notice that I divided that section into two, my technical skills and my soft skills. Under technical skills, I put everything that I learned during my coding boot camp that I felt really comfortable in. I also added Python, which I had taught myself and which I did my coding interviews in. And you'll notice that I added Agile as well as Adobe Creative Cloud. I think that there was some merit to adding Agile because I had noticed that a lot of startups, especially or mid-sized companies, would say in their sort of job requirements or preferred qualifications that they were interested in someone who had experience working in an agile environment. So that I'm okay with having there. On the other hand, the Adobe Creative Cloud, I really think is sort of irrelevant here. As proud as I am of the fact that I'm relatively well versed with Adobe Audition and Premiere and After Effects and all that and Photoshop, it doesn't really add any value on a software engineering resume. So here, if there's one thing that I would improve is I would definitely remove the this. Then if you take a look at my soft skills, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of cringing reading this now. I do think that the first two are good, bilingual communicator and public speaker. These were fair things to add here. A leader is sort of debatable. I didn't have that much actual leadership experience, but I had some leadership, you know, at the college level. So that's, I'll leave that be. But motivator, I think that just doesn't really, it doesn't really have relevance to software engineering resume. And I would probably remove that now. I don't think that it adds much value. I would also probably change the wording of outstanding. I think outstanding is a little bit bombastic. Maybe you could just put some other word. And then the last part of the left column, my work experience, pretty standard stuff here. I had worked as a public speaking advisor at my university. So here I put a couple of bullet points that really captured what I did. And then you'll notice that I did put the fact that I used to stream on Twitch. For those of you who are familiar with Twitch, twitch.tv, where you can live stream yourself, playing video games. This is actually something that I was super proud of because I remember I did this during a summer and I made a lot of money during one summer streaming my brains out for two months. I got about 5,000 followers, 100 paying subscribers. It was the closest thing that I had done to something very entrepreneurial that sort of I built from the ground up and that had reached some level of success. So I was extremely proud of it and I wanted to put it on my resume. I still stand by putting this on my resume, even though it doesn't have that much relevance to anything related to software engineering, but I stand by it. By the way, if any of you are curious about this Twitch thing and would like me to talk about it a bit more, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll make a video about it in the future if there's enough demand for it. All right, so now we get to the more interesting stuff, the technical projects. This is what a lot of you have been asking me to show. How exactly did I capture all of those projects that I displayed in that other video in just a few lines or sometimes just a couple of lines on my resume? Resume. And this is exactly how I did it. Basically, you'll notice that for every project, the first bullet point captures exactly what that project is, as well as what tools or languages were used to build it in just one or two lines. And I think that's pretty important because someone who's glancing through the resume very quickly will immediately capture the essence of what they need to know from that first bullet point. So if we look at the sorting visualizer, built React Redux application for visualizing sorting algorithms, right? It explains what the application is and explains that we used React and Redux to build it. For the pathfinding visualizer, built vanilla JS application for visualizing pathfinding and maze generation algorithms. 
notes. It explains what the project is, and it explains that it was built using vanilla JS. Then for the programming language, built a small programming language and interpreter in JavaScript. So again, it sort of highlights that this was written in JavaScript, and it kind of explains what was built. Again, remember here, we do not have a full paragraph or a bunch of lines to explain this. We just have a few bullet points, especially since there are so many projects. It would be one thing if I only had, let's say, the pathfinding visualizer, and I had, you know, 10 bullet points that I could write about that project. But here I have a lot of projects, so for each one, I just want to put the most important stuff. And then you'll notice that for every project, the second bullet point sort of explains in a little bit more detail what the sort of key most impressive things about the project are. So for instance, for the sorting visualizer, here are all the sorting algorithms that I implemented. For the pathfinding algorithms, here are all the algorithms that I implemented, and I said the fact that I co-developed this one unique algorithm, I think it was the swarm algorithm, which was sort of a variation of A star, but we kind of capture that here. Same thing for the programming language and interpreter. Here I explain in one bullet point what the key most impressive things that we implemented were, variable declaration, functional calling, etc. You'll also notice that every project except the last one has a name that sort of gives away the project. And that's very good because again, if you imagine a recruiter or an engineer glancing through your resume super quickly, having them be able to understand that you created a sorting visualizer just from the title of the project is going to be helpful. It's going to play in your favor. And that's why, by the way, again, that fourth project that I talked about in that other video about software engineering projects, a Chrome extension, that's why it wasn't a great project because here you see the name Flow, which was the name of the product or like the thing that we had built we had called it flow, it doesn't really tell me anything, right? I don't know what that is without actually reading into the bullet points. And by the way, I could have sworn that this project was at the top of my projects. Pretty sure that I had another version of this resume that I brought to my Google interviews where that project was at the top because there was something, whatever. But so this is how I captured four pretty complex projects in just a few bullet points in a way that I think is pretty good. I think that this really conveys what these projects were and puts them in a pretty good good light. And of course, for all of the projects, I link to the GitHub and to the website of the corresponding projects so that someone who's looking at this resume at a computer can just click on them and immediately open the projects. Finally, we're at the last section of my resume, which I called the business projects and clubs. It's really hard to say whether or not this section was valuable to my resume as a software engineer. These projects are not at all related to coding. They were all done for business classes and entrepreneurship classes, but I have to admit that, like I said before, I didn't have any work experience, I didn't have any internship experience, so I really wanted to sell myself as much as possible, and I believed that these projects rounded me off and painted a better picture of sort of who I was and what skills I brought to the table, so that's why I included these projects in my resume. It's really hard to say again if they had any value on my resume, and I'll probably never know if they had any value and for instance, getting hired at Google, but that's why I had them here. So there you have it, the resume that got me into Google. As you saw, nothing too special, nothing too fancy. There were a few things that probably could have been taken out. There were a few things that were done probably pretty well, like the descriptions of the projects. And that's it. Now let's take a look at the most recent version of my resume to compare it to my old one. As you can see, I'm using the exact same template as in my old resume, but I've moved some sections around and replaced some altogether. For instance, I've put the education section at the bottom left and I've cut out a few things. I've also looped in the work experience that I had as a public speaking advisor in college under the education section here, under the University of Pennsylvania section. And then for the skills, I've put them at the bottom right and I've sort of reworded a few things. I've removed the Adobe Creative Cloud thing that I mentioned before. I replaced outstanding with strong under soft skills just to make it a bit less you know, bombastic. I've removed the motivator thing for instance and then I even added some fun facts here about like interests and hobbies, cardistry, 
as an interest because it's very important that people know that I'm into cardistry. Then at the top, I've got on the left my work experience, and on the right, I've got what I call my entrepreneurial experience. This is what I was sort of hinting at earlier when I said that this two-column layout with this template looks really good in my opinion. I think that here it sort of gives a very clean look of these two sort of equally important things in my mind. Uh, but so in the work experience, I've got, of course, my experience as a software engineer at Google, and I've also got this experience as a guest lecturer at Full Stack Academy, the boot camp that I went to. I've been guest lecturing there for the past year on algorithms and data structures. And so for Google, you can see that at the top, I start with some metrics, with performance ratings and promotion stuff. And then I get into bullet points of the sort of key things that I did while I was at Google. So I mentioned the fact that I was an intern manager, for instance, for a few interns and an engineering resident. I mentioned the key projects that I worked on or that I led. And then on the right here, we've got the section about AlgoExpert, my company. By the way, this is a perfect plug for AlgoExpert if you're preparing for your coding interviews, the types of coding interviews that big tech companies like Google like to give, then check out algoexpert.io, use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. As you can see here, we've gotten thousands of sales, we've gotten thousands of people who found the platform very helpful, so check it out. So at the top of this section, I start out with some metrics here, and these figures are actually a few months out of date now because this dates back to, I think, May or June. But so then uh, I go through bullet points of, you know, the key things that I've done with the company, and that's it. I think the key thing to take away when you compare that resume to my old resume is the removal of a bunch of stuff, as well as the sort of shift in focus on the resume. In other words, in the old resume, which is when I was closer to school than I am now, with little work experience, the focus is primarily on your education and on your projects. The more you progress in your career, the less these things become important, and the more you want to highlight your work experience. And then even beyond that, the more you progress in your career after that, the less some details become relevant. For example, I think that in the next iteration of my resume, I'm probably going to remove all of the bullet points under my education sections, except for, you know, UPenn math major, full stack academy, coding boot camp, and maybe my high school if I want to still accentuate the French American thing. And then even something like my work experience at Google or my entrepreneurial experience with Algo Expert, the more I progress in my career, the more all of the sub bullet points in those sections will become sort of irrelevant and they'll be captured with just a sort of title. Like for instance, X Google Software Engineer. That's gonna be it for this video. I really hope that you found it informative or fun or helpful or enjoyable or something. If you did, please go ahead and smash the like button. It really, really helps with the YouTube algorithm. It's all that I ask of you. And with that, it's 3.30 a.m. So I have to go to bed.